Hey, good morning. How y'all doing? It's Well Red Beard. Uh, let's talk about a book. We're here for a book review, and today we are talking about Of Men and Monsters by Tom Deddy, uh, and this is from Crystal Lake Publishers. Um, I enjoyed this book. I think I'm at three stars. Let, let, let's let's talk about it and, and see if I come around. Because I'll be honest with you, initially I was probably closer to four. Um, but there's there's things that um that I've thought about and kicked around, which has kind of brought me back to the three star mark. Um, ultimately, it is a very very fun novella. It is a quick read. Uh, the prose is good. The story's good. Um, there were just some things that were left hanging, in my opinion, um, that um, I guess I wanted more out of. And um, again, I, I just liked it. So, you know, uh, that's uh, that's the basic idea of a three-star review. But, but we'll see if that changes as I talk through this. Uh, uh, the author said that this originally started as um, like an homage to... Uh, I hate that fucking word, homage, 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 but to, um, like the ads in the back of like seventies, eighties comic books, you know, the ads for x-ray glasses and sea monkeys and, and whatnot. And, um, and it started there, but, uh, like a lot of things, the characters took over and turned it into something more. And it really does turn into something more. There's really no aspect of, um, supernatural or, um, or not real life horror, other than that, there, there's a bit in here about um, the the main character Ryan uh, ordering some uh, sea creatures out of the back of a um, a comic book, and they're not your run of the mill you know variation of shrimp that that were I guess was what sea monkeys were back in the day. But uh, this is something different, something a bit more extreme and and dangerous and whatnot, and it plays a a role in the story. But outside of that, there's nothing really extra supernatural to this story uh ultimately we follow ryan his brother matt and his mother as they flee an abusive relationship with his father father goes on a weekend fishing trip and they get the fuck out of dodge they head to a new uh mom's been planning for this but they head uh, they, they get this old decrepit rundown house uh i believe the town was called bayport it's an oceanside thing so you know other than the fact that they're worried about dad showing up at any minute, it's a fun little summer getaway for the boys. I mean, they both meet a um, new little love interest there on the beach. Uh, Ryan is 11, and Matt, I want to say, is like 15, 16. I'm not 100% sure on that. But, uh, you know, beach parties, cookouts, uh, bonfires, the 4th of July. Um, you know, it's a beach coming of age type deal uh and uh, you know young love a lot of that in here too um so ultimately you know where we're heading right i mean I, this is not a spoiler but dad's coming i mean we know this you know they're getting phone calls um and uh you know silence silence on the other end but they know they know where it is and uh ultimately um ryan uh, finds something on the beach after a big storm he goes out there treasure hunting because everything's washed up after this storm uh, and he finds something that gets him on the news and oh shit now dad knows exactly where we are um but um so that that's that's the gist again the only uh, supernatural or extra natural or whatever you want to call it element is the sea creature thing there's a cool bit about him finding a, a boxes of old comics up in the attic and spending uh, you know time with those uh um that very nostalgic feeling there you know uh, just awesome right um, powers out storm pin light in the comic book uh, a lot of nostalgia there for um a, an 80s kid but um uh so so really that's it i mean cool little coming of age novella now the things that uh that kind of stood out to me um was there's this element of a of an uh, uh, upper story bathroom in this book and, and we keep talking about it we keep talking about how it's there's a horrible smell coming from it um it's unusable basically but then it is usable for a particular aspect of the story later on um and, and you i mean you almost got to feel that there was something else going on there i mean a haunting uh Someone died there. Um, I don't know. I mean, gurgling and, and, and water sounds from the bathroom when no one's supposed to be using it. 
Um, you just felt that there was going to be more to that, and then there really wasn't. And then, uh, again, I told you that he found something on the beach. Um, I don't know. That, that part, other than the fact that he found something on the beach and he got on the news and, oh, shit, daddy's coming, that was really all there was about that. Like, you, I just kind of figured there would be more about what he found. And, and, I mean, I guess maybe that's just how it goes. Maybe on... You know, things wash up all the time, uh, you know, on beaches, I guess. But for me, I just kind of felt like there would be more to that particular part of it. Now, I actually read a couple um, uh, other reviews coming to this one by Richard Martin, which uh, I know I follow Richard on Twitter. He follows me on Twitter, but we don't really converse otherwise. But he, he, he I mean, I, he writes hella reviews, I'll tell you that. But uh, he talked about Ryan... Um, not acting like an 11 year old, like acting older, you know, and I didn't really pick up on that until like I read what he said about it, you know, just his relationship with his mother, his relationship with um, his little young love interest, Leah, um, that it felt um, not like an 11 year old. And, uh, and I don't know, I, mean, I don't disagree with Richard. I mean, I don't necessarily agree either. I mean, I, I didn't really go back and kind of read those parts. I mean, I, I see, uh, you know, I see what he's saying though. So, uh, there was that as well. Um, so for me, look, fun, uh, novella. Um, this is my second read by Tom Deddy, having read, um, uh, the one he did with, um, Silver Shamrock. I think it was called Blood Red Sky or, or something to that effect. I could be wrong. Uh, but of men and monsters, Tom Deddy, I'm giving it three stars. It's, it's fun, a nice, uh, quick summer read for sure. Uh, Crystal Lake Publishing, uh, great cover. The cover's great. Uh, I actually talked about that, how the cover artist really captured the uh, the theme of the book perfectly. Um, so, and you can kind of see there, you know, that, I mean, it's, uh, it's what I was talking about, the um, the little thing that he bought in the back of the comic book. It's it's not your average little sea monkey thing. Uh, grows and grows and grows. And, and, and actually <clears throat> serves a major role at the end of the story, which for me, it's kind of like, did it really, did it really serve, did it really do what we saw it do through an 11 year old's eyes? Or is that the 11 year old's way of, I guess, translating what really happened? Maybe, I don't know, think about that. But uh, uh, one other thing, it, it does give you a cool view of domestic violence from the point of view of an 11 year old kid. I mean, you don't, I mean, I'm not. I'm sure you get that, but for me, I don't get that often. It's usually from the point of view of the mother or for the point of view of, uh, I don't know, maybe an, a, a grown up looking back on their childhood. Uh, but, but getting that, you know, <clears throat> that the domestic violence, that whole subject matter of you from an 11 year old was kind of fresh. And, and, uh, I mean, I didn't enjoy it, but I enjoyed it if that makes sense. So, uh, anyway, Tom Daddy of Men and Monsters. I'm at three stars. Uh, it's a, it's a fun little, uh, novella. So, uh, check it out. Uh, this is Well Read Beard. Uh, this has been my book review. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying all your books as much as I am. If not, you're reading the wrong damn books.